Welcome everyone to Email on Tap. I'm your host here, Anthony Chuli, and we are at Etel West in cloudy Palm Springs, California today. Uh, I am thrilled to have as my guest today, Jen Capstraw. She is the Director of Strategic Insights and Evangelism at Iterable, and also the co-founder and president of Women of Email. Jen, thank you so much for being on the program. My pleasure, I'm very impressed. You got all my titles correct. <laughs> I know, it was, a, it was a lot, but I got it. Um, one of the things that I love about you is I've followed you for, for a while now on social media and you tend to be such a, a powerful voice and an influencer on email marketing. Um, how, did that, how did that come about and how do you find your unique voice when writing content or sharing social media? Uh it actually kind of goes back to my first career. This is um, a second or third, but I started out in radio and TV and uh, primarily as a broadcast journalist. And it was my job every day to be an expert on something and to speak in an authoritative way. And so it comes kind of naturally to me, the thing that I am doing now and love and enjoy so much to, um, to position myself as someone who has something to say. I didn't realize I had something to say for quite a while, though. Um, before there were a lot of really powerful communities of email marketers, you know, I was just another marketer out there doing my thing, um, reading the blogs and, and figuring out my own strategies. And I didn't actually realize until much later that I was doing some cool and innovative things. And once I discovered that, I found it pretty easy to, to say, hey, I've got something to say and I'm going to share it. And um, that led to more job opportunities where that became a big part of the job. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about Women of Email. Um, what an amazing organization with over 3,000 members now. Um, how, did, how did that organization come, come from an idea and translate into a powerful networking organization that it is? It actually started as a conversation about a lack of female representation at conferences. Um, and seeing a real imbalance of genders. Um, if you are ever at an email event, you might notice that it seems kind of a 50-50 split of men and women, and we don't necessarily see that represented on stage. And so Kristen Bond, one of my co-founders, wrote an article about her observations of this problem and some potential solutions. It started a conversation in the space, and that led me to connect with Kristen, uh, with Laura Atkins, mm -hmm. and with um, April Mullen, and we found we were all very like-minded on the same page about this issue. And so the next day I was like, well, let's do something about this. And we organized really quickly and our growth, we did not expect the growth that we achieved in a very short period of time. We had hundred members within a couple of days and we created our speakers bureau, but it's grown into so much more than that. Um, it's just a really enthusiastic and supportive community. We've got a mentoring program. Um, we have scholarship opportunities for women to attend conferences who have financial situations or, or budgetary situations that aren't gonna allow for them to go to these conferences. Um, and it's just a, a source of amazing advice. And I love it, it's, it's, it's awesome. And, and it's a great community to be a part of and it's free to join. So any woman or anyone who identifies as a woman who wants to join, I'm aboard. It, yeah, what an amazing organization. I've been so humbled to meet so many women of email here at this conference this week. And it's it's just a it's a, it's a pretty inspirational story, to be honest. Thanks. I appreciate it. Um, you were on a recent webinar that I listened to uh, and you talked about a, a prediction for 2019 being more morality in marketing. Um, can you explain that? What do you mean by brands having more morality in marketing as a as a potential trend for this year? Um, it's kind of a lot of ideas that are interconnected. Uh, one of them is that we're seeing more brands step up and infuse their marketing messaging that is with uh, concepts that are reflective of their values. Sometimes they're political or social. And, um, and, and those companies, those, those risks are taking off, are, are, they're benefiting. It doesn't matter where they fall, whether they lean more liberal or more conservative. If they take a strong stand on something and it's a very strongly held belief of the, the founders and, and the leadership, uh, it tends to pay off. It, it tends to produce more revenue, greater visibility. Most recently, we saw it with Gillette. Um, right. And there was a lot of negativity about mm -hmm. that message because it was it was the first time that we saw a message about toxic masculinity in marketing. And a lot of people were very offended by it. But I, I expect to see a lot of success for Gillette 
as a result of this because even when there's controversy, it doesn't hurt. So we saw controversy, for instance, surrounding uh, Chick-fil-A. We saw controversy surrounding Hobby Lobby, yet they continue to be very successful. So even when it's controversial, it's successful. But in addition to that, I'm seeing um, a trend toward greater respect and authenticity toward uh, prospects and customers. We're seeing um, companies are wanting to treat people the way that they want to be treated. And I am seeing a connection between um, the rise of the millennial generation and be assuming leadership roles. Mm -hmm. And they have very powerful moral compasses and, and um, codes that they abide by. And it's, it's spilling into the type of messaging that they're putting out there. Um, I'm Gen X, but I am surrounded by millennials. Most of the women of email are millennials. Uh, most of the team that I work with at Iterable are millennials. Our co-founders are millennials. And so once upon a time, my point of view on marketing success was, hey, if it converts, it's working. And what I was observing is that the generation of marketers that are rising now are saying, no, no, that's not enough. We need to treat people with respect. We need to um, honor their preferences. We need to be transparent about the messaging we're sending to them. Um, and, and so it's, it's tied into who they are as people and, and it's spilling into our marketing. And I think that that's tremendously valuable. It's, it's evolving my perspective quite a bit and it ties into this idea of uh, lifetime value right. as the ultimate KPI. Slowly, uh, brands are adopting LTV, lifetime customer value, as, as the, the biggest and most important KPI. And so that means you need to build a relationship that is long lasting. You need loyalty and retention. And you can't achieve that if you're using cheap tricks to convert people. So all of these concepts are kind of interconnected and they're leading to a fresh approach to, to marketing, in generally speaking, and as well as email marketing specifically. And I think it's it's really fantastic. And, and I'm enjoying it quite a bit. I actually, during that webinar, created kind of a morality spectrum where you could score yourself right. or, or a brand on that um, that spectrum. And um, it's, we're going to be putting out some more thought leadership that's related to that concept. You know, it's, it's an interesting fact because I was sitting into a few of the sessions today and uh, a lot of the keynote speakers are talking about not only building an emotional relationship with their customers and the importance of not just being surface level in the way that they market, but really truly being emotionally attached or creating that emotional relationship with their customers and also trust. And I think that goes back to your response of, of more morality in marketing is it's, there's more at stake now with brands in the way that they identify and they interact with their customers uh, than ever before. Uh, so I, I, certainly, I certainly agree with that prediction. And I, th I know it takes different levels for different folks of where they're at, but um, you know, we're, we're starting to see more brands stand up for social issues, uh, uh, you know, t take a stand or have a voice on, on whatever climate they're in and what, excuse me, whatever, whatever's going on. So um, I certainly, I, I remember picking that up from your webinar and I thought it would be uh, a, a relevant question to ask and, and have more information from you about that. Um, let's shift gears and talk about um, deliverability for a moment. Um, email continues to be the highest generating channel, arguably the highest generating channel from, from social, from SMS, from push. Uh, why do you think not only is, is email uh, still a, a part of the backbone or the workhorse for brands and their digital strategy, but more importantly, with deliverability, where does, where does that fall, in your opinion, on brands' strategic roadmap? Is it something that they only care about when something happens and the value goes up, or do you, do you think more brands are starting to take into consideration deliverability as it relates to their email marketing? I'm sure you know as well as I do that the only time people think about deliverability is when it's a problem, which is unfortunate. But if you are practicing moral marketing and delivering relevant information, then the problem solves itself. It doesn't become a problem. Um, but often folks are thinking a little too late and those cheap tricks that I mentioned before, that they do lead to deliverability challenges. So um, we're not seeing it being a proactive thing. It's it's reactive when it comes to deliverability, unfortunately. Um, getting back to the idea of email being that ultimate ROI channel, um, I actually read a report came out in December, something 
like 82% of CFOs are predicting a recession by 2020. And um, we also had that article recently in the Wall Street Journal saying like email is the cool new right. channel. It's what's old is new again. And I think that we're going to see email, we're get more attention shifting back to email because it is so cost effective and so high ROI. And we've had a tremendous decade. The last decade has been really phenomenal in terms of innovation and technology and, and all these great things that are happening. But um, as, as our economic situation starts shifting and belts start tightening, CFOs and CMOs are gonna have to make some tough decisions. And I think that we're gonna see them shifting back to email and, and giving it more marketing budget share um, and not investing in the, the riskier opportunities. So innovation might slow a little bit, but all of the innovation that we've had over the last decade has set us up for exceptional success going forward if we invest now and, and turn our attention now to the email channel. Yeah, very well said. Um, I want to close with, with this question. Uh, I've always respected your ability and your unique voice and the way that you have perspectives and your research that you do on email marketing. Uh, what advice would you give someone aspiring to start their uh, their content marketing journey or uh, tweeting or posting about relevant topics? Uh, what, what advice or tips or tactics would you provide someone that's that's really starting to get into that, being a veteran yourself uh, in, in social media? Well, first of all, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, you know, the, the secret to success is authenticity. Be yourself. Um, take, throw a flag in the sand, have a point of view and express it. And it doesn't have to even be right all the time. My perspective is always evolving and shifting and changing as I take in new ideas and, and, and reflect on ideas in, in different ways. So don't be afraid to take a stand and don't be afraid to evolve away from it going forward. Don't be afraid to fly your freak flag. Be authentic and true to who you are. I love I, it. I think like the weirder I am, the more people join my webinars, <laughs> and um, which encourages more bad behavior, but it's really paying off for us at Interval and, and people are really enjoying the sessions. Um, so yeah. you just be you and everybody has uh, a story to tell. Right. And we're all um, marketers as well as consumers. And just talking about your own experiences as a consumer through the lens of a marketer is always so interesting to other marketers in a really easy way to connect uh, and build your personal brand. Jen, this has been great. Thank you so much for taking the time. I had a great time. Uh, thank you all for tuning in and we hope to see you next time on another episode of Email on Tap.